Bedtime is the worst. <laughs> oh, but I do love bedtime stories. <laughs> Those are so cool. I like stories about princesses and dragons and pirates. Oh, and stories about tigers and, and robots and, and romance. Oh, I love a romance. <laughs> and adventure and ninjas and oh, fairies and, and pixies. And oh, of course, a story about a handsome brain. Enough. We don't have time for you to list every kind of story ever told. Rude. Besides, I thought you had a lot of time. Weren't you listening? We have no time. That's very confusing. All I know is that you are a very rude bunny. And you are a very rude hatter, whatever that is. And you, Mr. Mouse, I thought you were supposed to be nice. I am, dear. Quite nice. Lovely to see you. Well, lovely to see you, too. As for the rest of you, I'm going. Perfect. <laughs> Goodbye. No, bad bye. Hi, kids. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading The Princess and the P.E. Wiggle, snap, story time. Let's go. called him Hank. Prince Hank was going to be king one day, but first he had to get married. Awesome. Why do I have to get married? And you have to marry a princess. No substitutes allowed. That was Prince Hank's mother, the queen. It was time for princess interviews. This was where princesses from near and far would come to the palace and meet the prince, hoping to become the next queen. Hey. Hi. You didn't curtsy. Next. Make sure you curtsy. Nope. Next. Oh, hello, princess. And what kingdom do you hail from? Oh, I'm not a princess. I work here, remember? <laughs> Prince Hank did not remember. This was Miss Maggie, who had come to the palace to work for the queen. She had been there for ages, but Prince Hank was a little bit self-absorbed. That means he liked himself a lot and didn't care about or notice much else. You work here? What does that mean? Prince Hank was also not very familiar with work. He was a bit what we would call spoiled rotten. I'm a lady-in-waiting to the queen. Waiting? What are you waiting for? The bus? Lady-in-waiting means I wait on or serve the queen, kind of like an assistant. So you're not actually waiting for anything? No. And you're not here to try and marry me? Definitely not. The queen sent me to see if you needed anything. I suppose you could help me if any of these bootleg princesses try to get fresh. Very well. Next. Nope. Next. This went on for hours. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. I have the answer. Next. Oh, oh brother. No. As soon as a princess would enter the room, Prince Hank would send them away. Why don't you just talk to any of these princesses? You know, try to get to know them. They might be great. You're being, I hate to say it, a little bit rude, dude. Look, Maggie. Maggie. Whatever. I can't waste my time with girls who aren't queen material. The next queen has to be the real deal. Genuine, bona fide, 100% R-O-Y-U-L-L. -L. That spells royal. No, it doesn't. Um, I'm pretty sure it does. Anyway, these so-called princesses are totally bleh, and I'm bored, so I'm gonna go take a nap. Wait, I, I think there's one more girl. Ugh, fine. Next. Oh, hello. You look familiar. You remind me of someone I like. Prince Hank liked this princess immediately and invited her to stay at the castle. He was smitten, but soon it was clear they actually had a lot in common. She was very picky. Ew, next. She was very into herself, and she was not very polite. Somebody smells like cheese. Not me. I smell good. After dinner, everyone went down to the parlor for the evening's entertainment. 
In an effort to impress the princess, Prince Hank sang a song. I live in a castle, I wear a crown. It's so shiny, it's so awesome. Your turn, princess. Play us a song. Yeah, true love is great and love is nothing. I met my prince. Wah, 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 wah. Wait, no, you need to go higher. Now it's like this. Okay, I'm bored now. Where's my bed? That's when the queen leaned over to Maggie and whispered, This is how we'll tell if she's a real princess. The plan was to place one tiny green pea under the mattress in the guest bedroom. You see, supposedly a real princess would be so sensitive she would feel the teeny tiny lump and not be able to sleep a wink. Maggie thought it was a little silly, but she followed the queen's orders. <laughs> okay, your bed's ready, princess. Finally, I'm exhausted. Well, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ew, gross. Oh, sorry, it's just an expression. <laughs> Good night. The next morning, Maggie and the queen eagerly waited for the princess to join them for breakfast. Did their test work? Had she felt the pee? Finally, the princess came down. Good morning, princess. But before they could ask how she slept, the princess said, Oh my gosh, there was a giant lump in the middle of my mattress. I couldn't sleep at all. Oh really? Well, we'll have that taken care of at once. Maggie! On it, ma'am. So Maggie lugged a new mattress all the way up the stairs and plopped it on the bed. <sighs> Surely she won't feel the pee under two mattresses. Curious and But curiouser. the next morning played out the same. Ugh, I couldn't sleep a wink. I could still feel this gigantic pokey lump. So Maggie pulled another mattress up the stairs and put it on the bed. Ugh, okay, maybe she could feel the pee with two mattresses, but good luck feeling it with three. <laughs> But you guessed it, the princess once again came down to breakfast, rubbing her eyes and yawning. And once again, Maggie was struggling to get yet another mattress up to the guest room and on top of a now very high bed. And this happened again and again and again and again. Finally, Maggie asked the queen, Your Highness, isn't it obvious that the princess is a real princess? She felt the pee every single night, no matter how many mattresses I put on her bed. This is a very serious thing, Maggie. Do you know how many fake princesses there are out there? No. It's a real problem. Whatever you say, Your Highness. Oh, here she comes. Let me guess, you didn't sleep a wink? Not again. <gasps> how many does it take? A million? A million mattresses? I'll be dragging around mattresses until I'm an old lady. Hey, Maggie. Prince James. Prince James was Hank's twin brother. He was born four minutes after Hank, and being the younger twin, he would never be king, but he didn't mind. He was totally cool with just being a regular guy. Well, he was still a cool. prince, but he was very laid back. Pretty much the opposite of Hank. Maggie and James had known each other for quite some time and liked each other a lot. They liked to do not so royal things together, like fill up the palace pool with slime, eat ice cream sundaes till their tummies hurt, and sneak into the kitchen to mess with the royal chef's menu. Goose liver pate? No thanks. Let's just change it to pizza. Extra cheese. Ooh, add pineapple. Yep, they were partners in crime. Cute. Oh, uh, what you up to? The princess peach ass. The what? Prince Hank can only marry a true royal, and the queen wanted me to make sure that this girl's a real princess, so I put a pee under her mattress. Oh, yeah, I still don't get it. Well, apparently princesses have a super high sensitivity and can feel something as small as a tiny pee under their mattress. And sure enough, this princess has felt it every single night for like two whole weeks. So I just keep stacking mattresses, but she keeps complaining about the pee. Maybe she just likes to complain? That's a possibility. Hey, I have an idea. Let's take the pee out and see if she still says her mattress is lumpy. Ooh, scandalous. Let's do it. You almost got it. Just a little more. Okay, I see it. Get it, get it! Wow, I can't believe you lugged all those mattresses up there. I'm pretty strong. So, what now? We wait and see how the princess sleeps. 
It seemed like forever until the princess's bedtime. I win! No way! I always win! Mother always lets me win! You're playing the game wrong! Oh no! Well, my mother always lets me win, so you're playing it wrong! Wanna play again? No, I'm gonna go to bed. Gee, I really hope I can sleep tonight. That bed is so lumpy. Anyway, good night, everybody! Good night, my love. Here comes the moment of truth! The next morning, Prince James and Maggie waited for the princess, eagerly awaiting her report. Here she comes. But instead of appearing well rested, the princess looked like she hadn't slept at all. No way! He was gone, but the princess said, OMG, I literally tossed and turned all night long. Really? Yeah, it's like there's this lump right in the middle of the bed. I'm very sensitive to these things, you know, being a princess and all. Maggie and James were totally confused. I don't get it. We removed the pee, but she says she still felt the lump. She must be making it up, but why would she randomly lie about something like that? I got it. She knows about the princess and the pee test. So she's faking it to seem like a real princess. Yeah, at least I think so. So if she's not a princess, who is she? I don't know, but we have to find out. How can we do that? We spy. Oh. So fun. <laughs> James and Maggie both loved a good caper. They excitedly prepared for their super secret spy mission. Okay, do we have everything we need? Let's check. Binoculars? Check. Walkie talkies? Check. Night vision goggles? Check. Grappling hook? Check. Candy in case we get hungry? Ooh, good thinking. All right, let's go spy on the princess. Um, first rule of spy missions is that you don't yell that you're going on a spy mission. Got it. Let's go. There she is. What now? Now we just wait for her to reveal her true self. But the princess wasn't up to anything unusual. She did her nails, she read a magazine, she brushed her hair, she washed her face. You know, totally normal stuff. What? Huh? Ah, she's coming this way. So she's a witch. Major plot twist. But why the princess act? We have to get to the bottom of this. Maggie and James didn't have flying broomsticks, so they couldn't follow the princess, a uh, witch, wherever she was going. So they just had to wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. The witch finally came back just before dawn. James and Maggie watched as she emptied out a small bag. What's all that stuff? Wait, shh, listen. Okay, the recipe calls for the eye of a rattlesnake, the whiskers of a catfish, three mouse tails, one ounce of kangaroo sweat. Ew. She's casting a spell. And a lock of stallion hair. Now just stir and voila, the magic potion is ready to serve. So that's why Hank likes her so much. She's been feeding him love potions. Not on my watch. Let's go stop her. James and Maggie ran to breakfast to thwart whatever wicked plan the witch had cooked up. Okay, so what's our plan? Okay, when she gets down here... Good morning, princess, my love. Ah, she's here! What do we do? Wash her face! Hey, what the heck are you doing? James, stop washing my girlfriend. She's a witch! She's got green under there, and she has a pointy hat, and she flies around on a broomstick, and she cooked up a love potion to make you love her. She's not a real princess at all. She totally pretended to feel the pee under her mattress, but it was all a ruse. She's a witch, I tell ya! Are you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay, good. Apologize to the princess at once. Didn't you hear what I just said? Your girlfriend's a witch! It's no use, guys. He can't hear anything bad about me. He's in love. Can't you see? The spell is too powerful! That's right. And now you'll love me, too! Watch out! <coughs> oh, no! The potion! Now we're going to... We're going to... To... I forget what I was gonna say. Oh, really? Oh, hi, princess. 
You look so beautiful this morning. Ah, why thank you, James. Uh Uh-oh. James, James, you're under her spell, can't you see? You're a pretty princess. Ah, what do I do now? This is terrible. Both princes are under the spell of the witch. Wait, why am I not under the spell? I breathed in the love potion too. Relax, it only works on princes. It's a very specific spell. Oh, but why? What are you trying to do? Well, I was trying to marry Prince Hank, but now I guess I have my choice, don't I? Maybe I'll marry Prince James. No! No? Ah, does someone have a crush? Prince James and... What's your name again? Maggie. Maggie, sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Shush! First comes love, then comes marriage. So not cool. Oh, wait, not if I marry him. I can't hear you, la 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 la. Okay, I have to figure out how to defeat the witch and break the spell. All right, how do you destroy witches? Water! Yeah, I'll just dump a bucket of water on her like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. That won't work. And if you mess up my makeup, I will conjure up a curse. So bad. Okay, fine. Uh, think, Maggie. Oh, Dorothy also crushed a witch with her house. That's your plan? You're gonna smush me with a house? Yeah, I guess not. Ooh, Hansel and Gretel pushed their witch into an oven. No thanks. Face it, Muggy. Maggie. Whatever. Face it, Maggie. I'm going to marry the prince, and you can't stop me. Why do you even want to marry the prince anyway? Aren't we just supposed to marry, like, wizards or ogres or something? Seriously? What? You don't think witches grow up reading fairy tales too? They do? Yes! And all my life, deep down, I've known that I'm really supposed to be a princess. So when I heard there was a real prince looking for a princess, well, I put on my dress and I hightailed it over here. Okay, well, I guess that makes sense to me. I mean, I'd like to be a princess too. (laughs) Who wouldn't? But don't you think it's a little messed up that you used the love potion on Hank? I wanted him to like me. Honestly, I think you guys have a lot in common. I think he'd like you anyways. Really? You think so? Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I think James likes you too, by the way. Really? I mean, yeah. I guess he's pretty cool. I was only kidding when I said that I might marry him. It doesn't matter. I'm not a princess. I don't know if you noticed, but I wear the same dress literally every single day. Well, except today. These are my spy clothes. Wait, I just got a great idea. Let's do a princess makeover! Fun! Their princess makeover party was so much fun. The girls barely noticed that they were totally bonding. Could they really become friends? They sure looked like besties. Wow, she's beautiful. Wow. <laughs> well, you do know this doesn't technically make me a princess, right? Who cares? If you feel like a princess, you're a princess. End of story. Now let's go get Hank and James and go have some fun. Princess, my love. No, she's my love. Um, I think you have to break the spell first. Oh, right. Do you have any lizard tails or grasshopper belly buttons? Uh, not on me. I'll just try a chant. All right, let's see. This should work. Loveth, spell, brachioso. What happened? I feel weird. Hey, Maggie, cool dress. (laughs) This whole thing? (laughs) Hey, I got an idea. Let's go play mini golf and get some ice cream. Great idea. So the four went out on a double date and had a blast. The princess witch was nervous to reveal her true identity to Prince Hank, but he thought it was pretty cool. Ice creamiosa magicus applieth into my mouth. This is seriously so much cooler than being royalty. It took a little convincing for the queen to come around, but she realized that having a royal family member with magical powers could come quite in handy. But most importantly, she saw how happy the princess witch and Hank were. The queen did have one question, though. So did you really feel the pee under all those mattresses? No, I read about that in a fairy tale once, so I thought it was worth a shot. The queen also approved the match between James and Maggie. They were obviously perfect for each other. Yay! So the story ends with the happiest of fairy tale endings. Not just one true love, but two. 
and a couple of girls who grew up loving fairy tales became real princesses. Pretty cool. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Once upon a time, there was a king and queen. Hello. Hello. They were really good at their job. So it's no surprise that they were also really great parents. And their daughters, aka princesses, were also pretty awesome. The youngest daughter named Tanya was really special. Some might even say enchanting. But Princess Tanya was not just into jewels, fancy dresses, and tea parties. <laughs> although those things were all pretty cool too. Yeah, I have lots of hopes and dreams. And I really love, love, love soccer. Or some might say football. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I don't play soccer in this dress. That's better. Tanya went for a walk through the forest near the castle. She had her special golden ball with her. Watch this. Uh-oh, it's about to fall in. No, no. Oh no. Oh man. Oh no, oh no, oh no, my golden ball. Princess Tanya lost her golden ball in the well. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go home. That afternoon, when it was tea time, Princess Tanya was sitting with her sisters and her mom. She was not her usual happy self. They could see something was wrong. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Sorry. Now, why don't you go back to the well and see if you can get it back? Okay, I'll try. So the princess went back to the well by the linden tree. And of course, when she got there, no ball was in sight. <laughs> why are you crying? Huh? Then whose voice was that? Hello, it's me. Ah, you're, you're, you're talking and you're a frog. You're a talking frog. So why are you so sad? I could hear your cries from miles away. Well, yesterday my most favorite golden soccer ball fell into the well when I was trying to show the sun some really cool tricks. Hmm, that does sound like a problem. It is, and now I don't know what to do. <laughs> hmm, I bet I could help. That's sweet, but I don't really know how a tiny talking frog is going to be able to get me a new golden ball. Oh, I mean, I could go fetch your ball for you. Really? Yeah, I'm a really good swimmer. And you look like you're a good person. Who needs a helping hand? Poor flipper. What, what would you call this? Um, I'm not sure. So, are you going to get my ball or not? Absolutely. Great, thanks. Okay, but what do I get in return? There's always a catch. What can I offer you? Friendship. I don't have any friends. Huh? You know this royal forest, this wishing well, these woods? They all get pretty lonely. Okay, you got yourself a deal. Deal. <laughs> Ew. I mean, thanks. Princess Tanya watched as the frog took a running start and leapt into the well. And she waited, and waited, and waited. Then suddenly, the Awesome! Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy I could kiss, um, give you a nice nod of thanks. <laughs> See ya, frog dude. Where are you going? You promised we'd be friends. You gave me a high five. But Princess Tanya was so excited she forgot about her deal with the frog. She dribbled it all the way home. Wait for me! You're running too fast. I can't keep up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Princess Tanya had already made it back to the castle. And she shoots, she scores! The king, queen, and princess were all eating a big, wonderful breakfast. Fruit salad, sparkling cider, French toast with strawberries, sprinkles, and whipped cream. Princess Tanya's favorite. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I'll get it! Princess Tanya excitedly ran to the door as fast as she could. As she opened the door, she looked around but couldn't see anybody. When she looked down... Hi, best friend. <laughs> Give me a hug, new best friend. Ah! Whoa! A talking frog! Maybe there is something more to this frog guy than meets the eye. Ooh! Like something magical? You know I love magic! Uh-huh. Dear daughters, young friend, 
Would you care to join us at the table? Wait, if this is your dad, and you're a princess, then that means he's the king. Cool. Good day, your highness. It's so nice to meet you. Let's eat. Mr. Frog, we can pull up a chair for you. Or a lily pad, or a chair made out of lily pads. I'm sure we have one lying around somewhere. Is it all right if I call you Mr. Froggy? Well, my name is Prince. I mean, uh, Prince. Like in Paw Prince. Definitely not Royal Prince or anything like that. Yeah, you can call me Paw Prince. Well, we are quite happy to have you here, Paw Prince. Princess, I would be most delighted if you shared this special treat with me. Sure. <laughs> That's yummers. Ooh, I want to try. Me too. Well, I wouldn't mind a little smackerel of whipped cream. We can all share. So the whole royal family and the frog enjoyed sharing the frog's whipped cream and other treats too. They laughed and got to know each other more. When breakfast was over, Princess Tanya knew what she had to do. So, uh, Paw Prince, you want to stay and hang out? I have a soccer ball with your name on it. Oh, not literally your name. It's gold. Remember the gold soccer ball that you rescued for me? Yeah, I know, I know. Let's go. We're coming, We're coming too. too. Hey, Paw Prince, think fast. Ha, ah, nice kick, Princess. The princesses and the frog had a lovely day. Not only did they play soccer, but they made necklaces out of real flowers. They went for a walk in the kingdom and tried fresh bread from the baker. Tanya and Paw Prince the Frog got ready for bed. They got into their PJs, they brushed their teeth, and combed their hair. Even though it was almost bedtime, Princess Tanya didn't want the day to end. She was having so much fun with her new frog friend. I know, how about we paint our fingernails? I'd love to but I don't actually have nails. That's okay, we can do face masks instead. This will exfoliate your pores. Thank you, uh, sorry I'm so slimy. It's kind of a frog thing. <laughs> Tanya dear, time for bed. No staying up too late, you have a soccer game tomorrow. Okay, but where should Paw Prince sleep? I'm happy to sleep on the floor, or a wet rag if you have one. Nonsense, only the best spa guests. Wait. I have an idea. And with that, Princess Tanya took the frog to the pool room. You could sleep in this. It's super comfy. Thank you so much, Princess Tanya. I really had a nice day. Me too. And thank you again for bringing my golden ball back. You're welcome. Anyway, good night, Paw Prince. Good night, Princess. That night, after Princess Tanya fell asleep, she had a very strange dream. So Princess Tanya was having a really crazy dream. Wow, Paw Prince, you're really good at soccer. <laughs> yes, we should be teammates for life. Do you like that idea? I do. That sounds fun. I do too. And then Princess Tanya woke up in a flash. Whoa, what a strange dream. I wonder what it means. <sighs> Meanwhile, Paw Prince the Frog was having his own dilemma. He woke up before anyone else in the castle and went to see his friend, Mr. Sun. So the thing is, son, time is running out. What do you mean? Like the spell? It's about to run out. The spell that the witch put on me a long time ago that turned me from a prince into a frog for 10 years. Oh, that spell, go on. But once I turn back into a prince, what if things change between me and Tanya? What do you mean? Like we've become such good friends. I don't want to ruin a good thing. Well, I think Princess Tanya will understand. And I don't want Tanya to only like me because I'm a prince. I'm more than just royalty. I want her to like me for me. Tanya has a good heart. She will like you no matter what you look like. So, Paw Prince, wait a minute. I just got that. Paw Prince? Like Prince? Because he's a royal prince? Whoa, this story is so crazy. Anyway, Paw Prince walked back to the castle and suddenly... Whoa, 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 wow! Uh-oh, it's happening! The 10-year spell is over! And there he was, oh, Prince. the royal frog prince! The spell was broken! Whoa, I look good! I gotta get back to the castle before everyone wakes up! 
Oh! Ouch! But all this ruckus was so loud that it woke up Tanya and she came to the door to see if her friend the frog was okay. But she was in for a surprise. Oh, Paw Prince? I heard a... Uh... Hey! What? What the? Who are you? You, you, you better stand back, mister! Yeah, 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 yeah! Tanya? Tanya! Hey! How do you know my name? Are you a spy? No, Tanya, I know I look a little different, but it's me. You? You, you, who, you're some sort of intruder in my house? I'm gonna call the cops in 30 seconds if you don't tell me what's going on here. It's me, Paw Prince. <gasps> Paw Prince? Did you eat Paw Prince and now he's talking to me from inside your belly? Open your mouth, let me see. I'll save you, Paw Prince. <laughs> no, I'm actual Paw Prince. I'm not a frog anymore. So the prince explained the whole story to Princess Tanya. He told her about the spell and also apologized about hiding his true identity from her. This is crazy. But I mean, deep down you are you no matter what. So you're saying we can still be friends? Of course. So friend, do you want to come to my soccer game this afternoon? Yes, I'd love that. Princess Tanya had just finished her soccer game when the prince was acting really weird, but she didn't know why. Now that my game's over, what do you want to do, Paw Prince? Actually, I think I can tell you now. My real name isn't Paw Prince. It's actually Prince Jeremy. Oh, man. I'm so used to calling you Paw Prince. Oh, Paw Prince. I get it. Hey, how about I give you a ride home? You can do that? Yeah, now that I'm a human again, I can get us a carriage. Wow, cool! Can you teach me to whistle like that? Sure! The first step to being able to whistle is not being a frog. <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Come on, let's go! So, since you're a prince, where's your kingdom? Pretty close to here. I haven't been there in so long since I became a frog. I should probably let my parents know I'm a human again. Well, why don't we go to your kingdom? You can tell your parents you're okay, and maybe you can show me things you like to do for fun there. Yeah, my parents are probably so worried. I'm like 10 years past my curfew. <laughs> but let's stop at my castle first so I can change out of my soccer gear. I probably smell like a soccer field. I think you smell just fine. Wonderful even. I mean, um, <clears throat> yeah. Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy arrived at her castle to find her family outside playing Twister again. Right hand green. Does it count if I put my hand on the grass? That's green. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. And other person? Who's that? It's Paul Prince. Turns out he's a real prince who was cursed by a witch. I'm Prince Jeremy. Oh, I always knew I liked you, Paul Prince. Mom, Dad, we're gonna go visit Jeremy's parents for a bit, but I promise we won't be back after dark. Of course, dear. Princess Tanya went to her room and got ready to go to the prince's kingdom. This is so strange. I usually don't care what I wear, but I feel like I have to look so nice for the prince today. Why am I so nervous? Maybe I like him? Oh my gosh, I like him. But after a short time, Princess Tanya pulled herself together and went outside to meet Prince Jeremy. Wow, Princess Tanya, you look fantastic. I, I mean, you always do. Uh, uh, I mean, forget I said anything. Aw, thanks. As the carriage rode off towards Prince Jeremy's kingdom, Princess Tanya felt her eyes began to grow heavy. It had been a long day. I'm just gonna catch some Z's for a sec. Oh, don't mind. I'm so glad we're gonna be teammates for life. Me too. We make a great team. Like the sun and the moon, or the grass and flowers, or a BF and GF. Yeah, just like that. Meanwhile, Prince Jeremy also had a lot on his mind. I just don't know what to do. Should I tell her how I feel? What if she doesn't feel the same? It might mess up our friendship. I would rather have Princess Tanya in my life as a friend than not at all. But little did Prince Jeremy know that Princess Tanya wasn't asleep at all. She had heard everything he said. Oh my gosh, should I tell him that I heard him say that? Princess Tanya, are you awake? Oh, yes, I'm awake now. I just woke up this very second and not any earlier than that. Uh, okay, well, we're here in my kingdom. 
As Prince Estanya and Prince Jeremy stepped out of the carriage, they were greeted with a beautiful sight. Wow, this place is amazing. I could live here forever. Maybe one day you could. What do you mean? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? Nothing. I mean, what? So Tanya and Jeremy had just arrived at his kingdom, and it was pretty cool. They were greeted by some adoring fans from the town. Prince Jeremy, is that you? You are all grown up. How handsome you are. Your parents are going to be so happy you're home. Aw, thank you all. And who is this beautiful friend you have with you? Beautiful? Is she beautiful? Oh, yeah, she is. I just noticed. This is Princess Tanya. Hello. We are so happy you're here. Hi. The reunion of Prince Jeremy and his parents was one for the record books. There was laughter, tears, stories, and all-around happiness. Oh, Queen Charlotte and King Liam, it's so cool to meet you, and becoming friends with your son has been so special. Well, you guys came on the perfect day. Tonight is our annual ice cream dance party. We'd love for you to join. I, I love, love dancing. dancing. <laughs> That night, at the ice cream dance party, Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy had a blast. He introduced her to old friends. They looked up at the stars. They danced. They ate tons of ice cream sundaes. They even kicked a soccer ball around. And they danced some more. I'm having so much fun. I just wish my family was here to experience this too. <laughs> But what Tanya didn't know was that Prince Jeremy had already secretly planned a big surprise. All of a sudden, some familiar faces showed up at the dance party. We're here. No, we can't miss a party. We have FOMO. Ooh, I like to shake it, shake it. We came as soon as we heard the word ice cream. Ah, Prince Jeremy, you planned this? Well, yeah. Thank you so much. Um. Princess Tanya? Yeah? The thing is, I wanted to invite your family here so that they could be together with my family and we could all share in this special moment. Um, what special moment? Well, the thing is, when the witch put that spell on me to become a frog, the catch was that whoever I was hanging out with when the spell was broken was who I should marry. Um, and who were you hanging out with? You! <laughs> but it's not just because of the spell. Since the moment I met you, there was something special about you. And the more we became friends, I knew I was falling in love with you. And I want to marry you and live happily ever after. Um, that's a lot. I really like you too, but we kind of just met not too long ago. Maybe we should start by going on a date. You're right, I like that idea. And that night, everyone was so happy and relieved to be together. The two families danced the night away. And little secret, Princess Tanya and Prince Jeremy did get married, and they smirched their two kingdoms together, and all the people lived together in harmony, and of course, they all loved playing soccer together. And you know what? They lived happily ever after. I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Alice in Wonderland. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Oh, I'm Alice, hi. So I was here trying my best not to be so bored even though there was nothing to do but stare into space like this. When I noticed a little white rabbit this was no ordinary rabbit. He was wearing a suit and glasses and he was talking to himself. It seemed like he was late. A talking rabbit who could tell time? This wasn't boring at all. He rushed right past me saying, Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, oh dear. Well, this was just too curious. I must follow the white rabbit. Wow, this is so fun. He slipped into a rabbit hole. So I did too. 
Whoa! But this was no ordinary rabbit hole. Ah! Wait, I'm not really falling. I'm more like floating, like a feather. Cool. <laughs> Wait, where am I? Whoa! Did I fall all the way through the earth? Maybe I'm in Australia. <laughs> Good thing they speak English there. <laughs> hmm, a small key. But this key is way too small for any of these doors. Well, what do you know? There's a teensy door. Wow, that is amazing. Too bad this door's so small. I don't even think I could get my head through. And if I could, what good would my head be without the rest of me? <sighs> hey, that wasn't there before. It says, drink me. Hmm, I know I'm not supposed to just drink things willy-nilly. What if it's poison? Or what if it's something just weird, like cauliflower juice? <laughs> hmm, it says here, Definitely not poison, and most certainly not cauliflower juice. Well, that's odd. Okay, I'll try just a sip. Mmm, delicious! It tastes like everything I like. Cherry pie, ice cream, pineapples, roast turkey, French toast, mmm, pancakes, mmm. Oh, hey, hey, what's happening? Uh-oh, oh, I wonder if I shouldn't have tried that juice. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Well, this is totally weird. But hey, now I can go into that garden. Oh no, the key is all the way up there at the table. That's as high as the Empire State Building now. Whoa. There's a giant cookie. Well, if the drink made me smaller, maybe the cookie will make me bigger. Food does make you grow. <laughs> okay, here goes nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Oh, oh, wait, I think, whoa. Well, this is not what I had in mind. Now I'm so big that I'm stuck. But it's good to know cookies are nutritious. Oh dear, I'm incredibly late. The queen simply will not tolerate this. Oh dear. Please, Mr. Rabbit, I'm stuck. I can't help you now. Didn't you hear me? I'm terribly late. But, but what if I'm stuck up here forever? It's really hot in here and I don't like being a giant. <laughs> Stop crying. I'll get all wet and ruin this new suit. I'm sorry, but this is just really uncomfortable. That's so sad. Ah, well, I'm leaving. Well, that's better at least. Wait, wait a second, I'm shrinking. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, oh no. Well, this isn't good. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. <sighs> Luckily, I'm a very good swimmer. <laughs> I took lessons at camp. <laughs> oh, look, there's a friendly looking mouse. Yoo-hoo, mousey. <laughs> Mr. Mouse, do you know how to get to the beautiful garden with the Ferris wheel and the merry-go-round? Come on, follow me. Okay. <laughs> Soon we were joined by all sorts of small animals. A gang of baby ducks, a salamander, two frogs and a hamster named Philip. <laughs> we swam and swam and swam, going right under the door and into the garden. And downstream, past flowers and crickets, caterpillars and garden gnomes. That's so magical. When we finally got to dry land, I thought we would go play, or at least find a snack. <laughs> but the animals said they had to have an election, but they couldn't decide what they were voting on, and it got quite noisy. Oh look, there's the white rabbit. He was the one who led me down the rabbit hole, so he must know the way out. I chased after him, but I was too small for him to notice me. Oh, 
If only there was some more growing potion! And poof! Just like magic, there was a little bottle right in my path. And it had a label on it that said, Drink me, Alice. So I took a sip. Wow, nothing makes sense in Wonderland. And I grew! <laughs> what a relief! Oh, I'm me again! Not a great big giant and not a teeny tiny mouse! Oh, speaking of a tiny mouse, all of the small animals saw me suddenly grow larger and boy did that scare them! They all scattered away shrieking! Girlzilla! She's a giant! Sorry. Where's that darn rabbit this time? I'm looking for a wabbit. Are you looking for something? I found myself face to face with a giant caterpillar. Wait, did I shrink again? You don't look shrunken to me. But why are you so large? And how did you learn to talk? That's a silly question. Are you silly? I don't think so. Well then, let's hear a poem. Excuse me? I'd like to hear a poem. Poem. One that rhymes, please. Um, okay, well, I never heard of a caterpillar who likes poetry, but here goes. <clears throat> this one is called The Queen of Hearts. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The King of Hearts called for the tarts and beat the Knave full sore. The Knave of Hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. OMG, I love it. How dare you accuse the knave of stealing the queen's tart? Don't you know the queen will stay off with his head? It's only a made-up poem. The queen of hearts isn't real. Shh! Of course the queen is real. And if she hears you say she isn't, she'll say off with your head. Oh no, but I like my head. It helps me think things and see things and smell things. And it has my hair on it. I really like my hair. <laughs> You're a traitor to the queen. Oh, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I, I, I wish I could shrink down so super tiny that I could just escape. Here, eat this. I gobbled up the cookie that he gave me and I grew taller, and taller, and taller, and I was very gigantic. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Hey, I want to be small so I could just hide from the queen. You made me even bigger. And you've turned rainbow colored, so you're very easy to spot. Oh, you caterpillar, I have a step on you. That would be a crime, and the queen would say. Off with her head, yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. Oh, how puzzling all these changes are. I'm never sure what I'm going to be from one minute to another. I've got to get back to looking like myself again, and I must get to that garden and ride the Ferris wheel at least once, and then I definitely, absolutely must get home in time for dinner. Oh, where's that rabbit? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Oh. I'm still all funny. Let's see, how do I get back to myself? Just good old Alice. Hey, there's that rabbit. Hey, rabbit. <laughs> hey, I'm talking here. Oh, there you are. There I am, but I've been looking for you. Marianne, you dreadful girl. Get back to work at once. Huh? Oh boy, worst assistant I've ever had. I think you have me confused with someone else. <laughs> Perhaps someone who's rather tall and multicolored. That's enough jibber jabber nonsense. Now will you please go fetch my fan? I've lost my other one. Fine, but after I do, you're telling me the way out of this crazy rabbit hole. Ooh, this is so exciting. Why is his house big enough to fit a giant? Oh, maybe it's so when he hops, he doesn't hit the ceiling. <laughs> I bet that's it. Pretty smart. Now, where's that fan? Oh, I think I deserve a cookie for this. There's that fan. Wait a second. Last time I picked up the rabbit's fan, I changed size. But did I grow to be a gigantic giant? Or did I shrink down teensy-weensy? I can't remember. Well, let's just take a chance. 
Here goes nothing. Hey, I'm not all rainbow colored now. <laughs> Score! But, well, wait, uh-oh, I, I think I'm growing. Oh, I better crouch down so that I don't hit the ceiling. Oh no! Oh no, oh no! Wow, this is so fun. <gasps> oh no, oh no, my house! You're wearing my house! What, this old thing? I'm calling the police. The police? But I'm already locked up. Well, kids, this takes the cake. If I told my friends back home about this, they'd never believe me. <laughs> this is just like a fairy tale. Someone should write a story about me. We could call it Alice in the Rabbit Hole. Nah, that doesn't sound right. Hmm. It's the fuzz! All right, come out with your hands up. Oh no, I hope she's okay. I can't come out, but I can put my hands up. See? <gasps> and she stole my cookie. Dreadful girl. But I'm going to need a backup here. We got a situation. I want to come out. I promise. I just can't. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Look, I'm only a kid. Biggest kid I ever saw. Maybe it's from stealing so many cookies. Hey, I had permission to eat those other cookies. And this one, well, I'm gonna eat it now just because you're being so mean. So, to you, rabbit. But we're gonna need to file a missing persons report. She disappeared. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, there's the house, and there's the rabbit, and the policeman. But where's Alice? Over here. The cookie made me shrink, and I escaped. Let's go. <sighs> OK, this looks like a great place to rest. <gasps> what are you guys supposed to be? We are footmen. Footmen? <laughs> but you have fins. Shouldn't I call you Finn Men? <laughs> that was so funny. Footman is a fancy word for a servant. I work for the Duchess. And I work for the Queen. Well, I am very impressed. Nice to meet you both. I think I'd like to ask the Duchess if she can help me find my way home. Wait! You need me to open the door. I'm the Footman. I can do it. Bless you. Bless you. Gesundheit. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Who let you in? My footman? More like the fin man. <laughs> Am I right? Need a tissue? Here. Watch the baby. Wait a second. I'm bigger than that baby. Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? But out there, I was tiny. Look, I'm tiny. I'm big. Tiny. Big. Whoa, this place is crazy. I'm big. <laughs> That's enough. I'm going to play croquet. Take good care of the baby. Why is everyone giving me jobs to do? Good thing I like babies. Okay, baby, it's just you and me. And me. Ah! A giant cat. Maybe you're just small. I think I'm my usual size now, actually. It's hard to tell sometimes. Say, do you know how to babysit? There's a baby here? I only see you, me, and a pig wearing a diaper. Ah! Oh, the baby turned into a pig! Oh no, I'm the worst babysitter ever! And why are you grinning? This isn't funny. I'm a Cheshire cat, it's what I do. Well, stop it. It's not funny, and I don't know how to take care of a pig slash baby. Don't worry about it. Porky knows how to take care of himself. Let's watch TV and order a pizza. Usually I'd say yes to pizza, but you guys are making me a little nervous. I'm out of here. <gasps> hey, the, the, the room turned all topsy-turvy. Do you know the way out of here? Why don't you use the door, you batchy galoob? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I'm still trying to find my way out of this rabbit hole. <gasps> oh, look, there's some nice looking fellows that should be able to help me. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> They're sleeping. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, wait a second. You're just pretending. We were hoping you would leave us alone. Well, that's rude. Says the girl who interrupted our tea party. Your hair is too long. You should get a haircut. <laughs> that was hilarious. Why, you're rude too. Besides, I like my hair, and that rude little mouse is still pretending to be asleep, even though we've met before. I thought we were friends. Oh no, he really is asleep. Poor little guy's exhausted. Oh dear, now I am the rude one. No worries, have some tea. I guess he's a sleep talker. <laughs> the other two introduced themselves as the March Hare and the Mad Hatter. The March Hare was an odd creature indeed. He would butter a piece of toast and take one bite and say, yuck, too much butter, and then on to the next piece of toast. Same thing, over and over again. And the Mad Hatter, he was even odder. No, that's an udder. I said otter. Sorry. An otter? Where? Not that kind of otter. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Good. Otters are utterly annoying. Why do you keep dipping your watch into your tea? Well, it all goes back to the time I killed time. And then the Mad Hatter told me the most ridiculous story. He had to sing for the queen. He says he sang an old classic, Twinkle Twinkle. Twinkle Twinkle, little bat, how I wonder where you're at. I told him he had the words all wrong, but he insisted he was right, and I was ruining his story. On he went. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Anyway, you'll get the idea. While well, the queen jumped up and said he was killing the time, and then she yelled, Off with his head! The Mad Hatter managed to escape, head and all. Whew, that was a close one. But ever since, time has been paused, stopped, finished, el finito. Yes, my watch stopped at four o'clock, and we've just been here ever since. It's always tea time. I love tea time, but I do wish dinner time would come. At least you don't ever have bedtime. Bedtime is the worst. <laughs> oh, but I do love bedtime stories. <laughs> Those are so cool. I like stories about princesses and dragons and pirates. Oh, and stories about tigers and, and robots and, and romance. Oh, I love a romance. <laughs> and adventure and ninjas and oh, fairies and, and pixies. And oh, of course, a story about a handsome prince. Wow, that is so cool. Enough, we don't have time for you to list every kind of story ever told. Rude. Besides, I thought you had a lot of time. Weren't you listening? We have no time. That's very confusing. All I know is that you are a very rude bunny and you are a very rude hatter, whatever that is. And you, Mr. Mouse, I thought you were supposed to be nice. I am, dear. Quite nice. Lovely to see you. Well, lovely to see you too. As for the rest of you, I'm going. Perfect. Goodbye. No, bad bye. It's the garden I've been looking for. Woohoo! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi again. <laughs> I'm finally in the garden that I've been looking for. Awesome sauce. I should go to the Ferris wheel <gasps> and get cotton candy. Oh, what's that noise? I better hide. Oh no, the queen of hearts. Watch out. Wow, the queen is actually a queen of hearts from a deck of playing cards. I wonder if she likes to play go fish. What's that? It smells like a rotten child. Hey, I'm not rotten. I'm really nice. Ask anybody, except the Mad Hatter <laughs> or the March Hare. They don't think I'm really nice. Or the White Rabbit. Don't ask him. He thinks I stole his cookie and ruined his house. <laughs> you did ruin my house. Off with her head. Uh-oh, she better watch out. No way, no, you're not offing with my head. I came here to do two things, ride the Ferris wheel and eat cotton candy. So kindly, your highness, tell me where the Ferris wheel is. She is just a child, dear. Maybe you shouldn't off with her head. Oh, well, 
can you at least play croquet? I sure can. Oh boy, do I wish I hadn't said that. The queen's croquet game was totally bananas. The card soldiers had to bend over backwards and frontwards to make the arches to hit the ball through. Except the croquet balls were live hedgehogs and no one had any regular mallets. Instead, they used real live pink flamingos. It was the weirdest game ever. Uh oh, this doesn't sound good. But I was too scared not to play or else she might say, off with Alice's head. Hmm, I'm really sorry, you guys. I promise to be very gentle. Thank you. No problem, Alice. Anyway, so I'm just standing over here waiting for my turn, and guess who I see? Drew Pandas? Rapunzel? Nuh uh. Crafty Carol? No. Octavia? Keep guessing. Snow White? No. Cheshire Cat? That's right, the Cheshire Cat. Well, sort of, anyway. All I could see was his Cheshire Cat grin. Look, right over there. Hey, Cheshire Cat, is that really you? Yeah, how you doing? Not so great. I thought this garden was gonna be the best place ever, and it's not at all. The queen keeps yelling about offing people's heads, which personally, I don't find very gracious, and I don't like this mean old game of croquet. I don't think it's nice at all to the flamingos, or the hedgehogs, or even the card soldiers. By the way, why are you just a mouth right now? What happened to the rest of you? It's simple. The queen can't say off with my head if I don't have a head. Ooh, that makes sense. How about that? That better? Much better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Any idea how we can escape? What is that? Off with us? Off with us? Ah! She couldn't figure out what to say, and she was getting pretty, 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 pretty angry. Quick, Cheshire Cat, how do we get out of here? Yo, Alice, eat this apple. Hey, watch it. Cool. Hey, Queen. Mm. What now? Now we're light enough to just float away. Huh? Whoa. from that mean old queen just in the nick of time. And hey, there's the Ferris wheel. <laughs> awesome. Now I just need to get the rest of me back so I can ride it. At least I have a mouth left to eat my cotton candy with. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I'm glad we got away from the queen, but what now? I'm just eyes and a mouth. Don't worry about it. All we gotta do is drink this potion. Wait a minute. Oh no, I left the potion in my pocket, which was on my pants, which have disappeared. Oh no, what if I'm only a mouth and eyes forever? I'll never get to learn ballet, or run a marathon, or swim with the dolphins. What about me over here? Those were my favorite pants. Whoa, Alice, is that you? Yeah, hi Drew. Wait, Drew, can you draw the rest of us? I think I can. How's that? Awesome, <laughs> thanks. Yay, I'm so happy. Okay, I don't know what you looked like before. Can you describe yourself? Oh sure, first let's see. I was tall, very tall, and strong with big muscles, a very cool mustache, and a suit made of pure gold. Oh, that's perfect. That is not what you looked like. Come on, why you gotta ruin all my fun? He's actually a purple stripy cat, super furry, with a yellow and orange necktie, <laughs> and a red hat with little flowers sticking out the top. Don't forget my orange cargo pants. Done. There's that potion. Told you I left it in my pocket. Never mind that now. Let's go play. <laughs> Woohoo! Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat went over to the Ferris wheel. They were so excited. Three tickets for the Ferris wheel, please. <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. You must be this tall to ride. Well, that was weird. I'm sure I was taller before. Or maybe the Ferris wheel was smaller. See, I keep eating these cookies and drinking these potions that make me grow and shrink, and I'm pretty sure the real me is tall enough to ride this ride. Sorry, kid. Move along. Ugh! Oh well, there were more rides, so the three went over to the merry-go-round. Three tickets for the merry-go-round, please. This is a kid's ride. You're way too tall. What? Now I'm too tall? 
too tall. Hey, there's a roller coaster over there. Maybe you'll be just the right amount of tall for that one. Let's try it. It totally looked like a regular roller coaster, but when they got there, they saw that it was ginormous and that the you must be this tall to ride sign was towering over their heads. I thought this garden was going to be amazing and so much fun, but it's not. First, there was that awful game of flamingo hedgehog croquet. Then, the queen wanted to off with my head. And now, all these rides keep changing size. Or am I? I don't even know. And, and I haven't even had one single bite of cotton candy! Aw, cheer up, Alice. Yeah, I don't like it when you're sad. Hey, I have an idea. Here! Yes! My own jetpack! That is amazing! Oh, I always wanted one of these. Now we can fly up to the top of the Ferris wheel. You can see all the sights. Awesome. And we can go around and around in circles just like a merry-go-round. Oh, okay, I'm getting dizzy. And we can go up and down and all around just like a roller coaster. Ah, too fast. That was fun, Drew. Thanks. Yeah, tons of fun. Oh, I'm just glad it's over. No problem, guys. Suddenly, the gang heard a familiar voice. There they are, off with their heads. Oh no, it's the Queen of Hearts. Run! Better yet, let's jet. Alice, Drew, and the Cheshire Cat flew right over the Queen and her army. She did not like that at all. She would have totally offed their heads if she could have reached them. Kids, what do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. First, Drew and the Cheshire Cat zipped over the queen's head and into safer territory. Drew quickly sketched a door leading to another garden. He flew through, followed by the Cheshire Cat. But when Alice got to the door, she realized it was too tiny for her. Oh no, I've grown giant again. What's going on? You guys go on ahead. I must find out the cure to all this growing and shrinking. Alice began to walk through the garden looking for an apple or a cookie like the ones she'd eaten before. Oh, there's a plate of tarts. Perfect. These are the queen's tarts. Hands off, you dessert thief. Sorry, I didn't know. All rise. Today the honorable judge, the king of hearts, will hear the case of the missing tarts. But the tarts are right there. So who stole the tarts? No one, they're right there. It was the knave. The knave of hearts stole the tarts. No, he didn't. Then why did you say he did? I didn't. Don't you remember your poem, your honor? <laughs> the evidence. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer's day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them clean away. The king of hearts called for the tarts and beat the knave full sore. The knave of hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. And so you see, this giant lady says the knave of hearts stole the tarts. Off with his head! No! Uh-oh, they better watch out. Please don't off with his head. It was just a made-up poem. Silence in the court. That means you, Alice. But quiet! Or it's off with your head. Hmm, her head is much too large to off. Hey, that's not my fault. Maybe she stole the tax. What? Me? I'm trying to defend you. She did steal my cookie. Oh dear, this was getting way out of control. Alice didn't steal any tarts. Well, she was going to, but she didn't actually do it. And she never met a knave of hearts before, but she was pretty sure he didn't steal any either. Besides, weren't the tarts right there and not missing at all? Your Honor, we can all see that the tarts are right here, as in not stolen. So why don't we all just forget about this whole thing and move on? <laughs> Who wants to play croquet? It's you! You're the girl from before! You were much smaller then. Exactly! It was she who stole the tarts. Your Honor, White Rabbit, Caterpillar, animals of the jury. You all have seen me before. You know that, for whatever reason, I keep changing size. It's not from eating. Well, I did eat that one cookie, and then that other one. But those cookies were magical! Or something. I don't know. Oh no! I hope she's okay! Will the Mad Hatter please take the stand? 
Oh, great. This guy again. Kids, as you know, the Mad Hatter and Alice did not exactly get along. The Hatter bowed before the Queen and then began the silliest nonsense Alice had ever seen or heard. There was a girl who stole some tarts, and Alice was her name-o. A-L-I-C-E, 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 and Alice was her name-o. He's just making up this song. No fair. The real song is B-I-N-G-O, and then she tried to blame the name-o. Alice was her name-o. A-L-I-C-E. Enough. I don't like this song. Off with his head. <laughs> Order! Order in the court! The animal jury will decide who is guilty, Alice or the knave. The animals of the jury whispered, barked, meowed, squeaked, and riveted among themselves. Finally, they had their decision. We, the animals of the jury, think it was Alice who ate the tarts. What? No! That can't be! The knave of hearts is as skinny as a card. Nobody ate the tarts. They're right there! Wait, I'm confused. I thought they were stolen. They were stolen, but now they're here. And none are missing? Nope. Well, why are we arguing about this? I wonder why anyone does anything here in Wonderland. It's all so silly. Oh, what did she say about Wonderland? Oh, poo to you. You're nothing but a card. Why don't you go fish? Off with her head! The queen sent her entire pack of cards on the attack. They all came flying at Alice, as if someone had shuffled them and thrown them in the air, ninja style. What? Huh? I think I'm back at home. Is this real? Ouch! And I think I'm my right size. Oh, this is wonderful. But how did I get back? Was it a dream? No, it couldn't be. But what if I want to go back to Wonderland sometime? It was scary and confusing sometimes, but also kind of fun. <laughs> oh well, time to eat. I'd love a cookie, or maybe a tart. Shh. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. See, there she is, right before her 18th birthday. Hi! <laughs> Let me tell you about life as a sea princess. We lived in a palace made of shells and pieces of treasure from sunken ships. At night, each princess slept in a bed of beautiful sea flowers. <laughs> and you've heard of a school of fish, right? That's where we studied and learned. I was just a regular girl. Oh, except my best friend was a dolphin. <laughs> Hi there. I guess you humans might not think that's too regular. The craziest adventure was when we sneaked into the sea witch's house. She lived in a giant sunken pirate ship. Super creepy, but also super cool. The sea witch had gone out to get a carton of whale milk for her coffee. We swam inside and... Wow. Cool. Cool? We were playing with a sword. Well, I was. Dolph can't hold a sword. No hands. And I was just about to defeat the pretend pirate ghost that I was battling when... La 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 the Hide! No! Let's get out of here! Out of where? Ah. Care to tell me what you're doing in my house? Nothing! Yeah, we took a wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, we don't even like it here. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, uh, see ya! Not so fast. Are you the daughter of the king? Um, yeah? I saw you on TV. You sang the Oceanic Anthem before the big squid dash in the orca race last year. Oh, down in the sea, by the prawns or the light, or the sea sponge we. Oh, I just love your voice. Here, have some tea. Oh, why, thank you. Hmm, suspicious. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, a beautiful voice. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? My voice? Yes. I would give you something wonderful in return. Anything you wished. We should really get going. Yes, I hate to be rude, but no thanks. Okay, we are never going back there. Definitely not. See you tomorrow at my place? Not if I see you first. Anyway, you may be wondering what was happening the next day. Nothing major. 
just my 18th birthday. <laughs> we were having a huge party and everyone was there. All my friends and my sisters and my mom and dad. <laughs> awesome. It was a pinata, tons of balloons, and a pin the tail on the tiger shark. Hey, cut that out. <laughs> and of course, we had a huge cake. <laughs> no candles though, because you know, water. <laughs> but I still made a wish. I wish that when I swim to the top of the ocean and look out, that I'll see a real live human prince. A handsome one, not like what my crazy sisters keep telling me about. Like, I hope he only has two eyes. <laughs> like the handsome princes I've seen in my fairy tale books. I wanna see him dance and ride a bike and play soccer. Oh, and I'd also like to dance and ride a bike and play soccer. That sounds cool. Hey, maybe I wanna be a human, just for a little while. Ahem. <clears throat> oh. Sorry, and I'm done. What do you wish for? I can't tell you that, but I will tell you that first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to the top of the ocean. I do that every morning. It's how I breathe. Oh, <laughs> I always forget that you're an air breather. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen a person? Not up close. What do you want to see a human for? No reason. The next morning, the Little Mermaid and Dolph swam to the top of the ocean where the water meets the sky. The last one there is a rotten turtle egg. Look, a ship. The prince, it's him. The who? What? Let's go. When the Little Mermaid and Dolph got to the surface, they looked out and saw a magnificent ship, definitely fit for a prince. There's got to be a prince on that ship. I just know it. What prince? That prince. A prince. What a dream boat. It is a nice boat, I guess. <laughs> no, he's the dream boat. <laughs> that means he's a total cutie pie. I don't like pie. Humans love pie. Gosh, you don't know anything about people, do you, Dolph? I know that that one is looking right at us. What? Ah! I can't let the prince see me like this. Like what? As a mermaid. But you are a mermaid. Yeah, and he's a human, Dolph. Never in any of the hundreds of fairy tales that I've read have I ever heard of a human falling in love with a mermaid. Love? Already? Sheesh. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm getting a little carried away, but he looks just like a storybook prince. Not at all like my sisters described. They said humans have horns and eight legs and a hundred eyes. But this human only has two perfectly perfect eyes. Maybe we should go home. I have a better idea. Let's go see what he's doing now. It's his birthday too? O-M-G whiz. We are so meant to be. Look, he's about to blow out his candles. Real candles, Dolph. Oh, well, I wonder what his wish is gonna be. Maybe it's to meet a mermaid. <laughs> Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Didn't he already make a wish on his birthday candles? Dolph, be quiet. I wish I didn't have to get married. At least, not to any of the princesses around here. I just want to meet someone who gets me. I get you. Someone who likes the things I like. Someone I can talk to. Someone down to earth who likes to take long walks and dance. I'm here. It's me. Be mine. Huh? Oh, no. I'll save you. I'm on it. We'll never be able to get him back on the ship. Let's carry him to shore. Got him. Who are you? I'm the one you wished for. Uh-oh, here comes a human. We have to go. But... No buts. Let's go. Goodbye, my prince. I'll come back for you. I promise. <laughs> Sir, are you okay? Where is she? Where's my princess? You fell overboard. You must have hit your head. No, she was here. She saved me. Whatever you say, sir. And so the little mermaid went straight to the sea witch. Ah, the king's daughter. What do you want, sweetheart? Um, well, I wanted to ask you, um, about feet. You want to ask me about feet? Well, I guess what I really want is to be a human. Okay, here's what I can do. I'll grant your wish, you'll be a human. Really? But you only have one month. If you can't make the prince fall in love with you in one month, then you'll return to the sea. 
not as a mermaid, but as a sea urchin. A sea urchin? And everyone knows sea urchins are the worst. Deal? Deal. Abracadabra. Pleasure doing business with you. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, your feet? Just swim towards the land. When you emerge from the water, you will have your very own feet. Oh. The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolph and her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Love it. Oh. Owie, ow, 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 oh, oh. Sea urchin, told you they were the worst. But at least I have my very own feet. <laughs> Let the dancing begin. Well, as soon as my foot stops stinging, darn urchins. Okay, first order of business, shoes. <laughs> I know all about shoes because of the fairy tales I've read. <laughs> Maybe I can get some glass slippers like Cinderella. <gasps> awesome. These are perfect. May I help you? Oh, I forgot about the whole no talking thing. Darn sea witch and her weird spells. Don't worry kids, I can still talk to you guys, but just no one in the story can hear me. You wanna buy these shoes? Those are a kid size six. <laughs> Let's find something in your size. <gasps> Cute! Ooh, these are much better. Wait, where are you going? You have to pay for those. You know, with money? Do you have money? I'll buy them for her. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What happened? Why don't you have any shoes? I think she's saying she fell off the boat. You poor thing. Can you not speak at all? You must have hit your head or something when you fell overboard. I'll take care of you. You'll live in the palace until you're better. Um, awesome. <laughs> if she's the princess, then she must be related to the prince. Oh. Princess Lily was so nice. She took me to get new clothes. And then it was time to go to the palace. Oh man, was it nice. But when we went to dinner, it was like he'd never seen me before in his life. Bummer. The princess explained to everyone that she had found me wandering around the town with no shoes, hungry and lost after I'd fallen off a ship passing in the night. She was wrong, obviously, but works for me. <laughs> hey, I fell off a ship yesterday too. Small world. Yeah, he fell overboard at his birthday party. He thinks a mermaid saved him. It's true. I can't remember her face, but I'm positive I saw her. Mermaids aren't real, Jeff. They're just pretend, Jeff. Where does your family live, dear? Mom, I told you, she can't talk. Things were going really well with the prince and princess. They taught me all kinds of stuff about the human world. Of course, they thought they were just helping me remember. You know, because I fell off a ship and bumped my head. But the best thing I learned was how to dance. The royal ball is coming up and you have to go. It's so much fun. Oh, ignore him. He still misses his imaginary mermaid girlfriend. Hey, Jeff, maybe you can invite the mermaid to the ball. Aw, sad. <laughs> You're very good at line dancing. Save a dance for me at the ball? Awesome. He likes me. Well, he doesn't exactly know that it's me he likes, but we're going to dance at the ball. That's something. Jeff, you know that daddy is going to make you dance with Princess Esmeralda all night? That's who Jeff is supposed to marry. They've been promised to each other for years. Wait, what? But that's not how this is supposed to go. The Sea King and all the Little Mermaid sisters were looking all over for her. Hi, excuse me, your highness. I uh, might know where your daughter is, maybe. You do? Where? Well, she's been very interested in humans the last couple days. And? Um. Speak, Dolphin, speak. I think maybe she found a way to go on land, your majesty, sir. But there's no way she could get onto land, unless... La 
la la la la la la la la la la Ziddy dee 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 Doo doo bop 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 Yes, who is it? Uh oh! Where is my daughter? Who? My daughter! Oh right, her! She's up there, with the humans. She thinks she's in love. <laughs> with a human? We made a deal and the spell's been cast. I can't interfere. Anyway, I'm busy recording my album. I'm calling it Witch's Group. It's jazz. You have until tonight to bring her home or else. The Sea King was so angry that he threw the Sea Witch in jail. You're making a huge mistake. What if you could have my palace? Say what now? You send me to land as a human. And if I can't get my daughter back, you win. You get my kingdom. Now that's interesting. Wait, your majesty, the mermaid really, really, really likes the prince. What if she doesn't want to come back with you? Well, you'll have to help me convince her. Me? Uh, and what happens to us if we fail? If you fail, you turn into a jellyfish, and I will have everything. And if we succeed? You won't. <laughs> Deal. Oy vey. It's finally time for the royal ball. Here ye, here ye, please make way for the lovely Princess Esmeralda! Whoa, we have legs! This is cool! I don't like it! These are feet! They're totally weird! They're not so bad. Look, I can jump! <laughs> oh, that's kind of neat. Dolphin the Sea King, I mean Prince Dolphery and the King of Sea Town, had just arrived and everyone was very happy to welcome the new guests to the Royal Ball. The Little Mermaid, of course, was a little suspicious. Right? I mean, why are they here? Excuse me, I have an announcement. Oh no. I just wanted to say it's so refreshing to see how nice you are to this mermaid. Mermaid? Mermaid? Who's a mermaid? Where? She's a mermaid and the sea witch gave her feet. The sea witch? This guy's hilarious. I mean, <laughs> right? Who ever heard of a sea witch? <laughs> oh no. What's the matter, dear? Cheer up. It's a party, right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second, your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. But you're not a mermaid. No, sweetie, I'm not, but... You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Excellent. Let's all just forget about all that silly nonsense about mermaids and sea witches, okay? Okay. Great! All right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no, everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. I guess this spell only worked on real humans. Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part one. He may have had human legs, but my dad was still the almighty sea king. And that meant he could summon an army of the toughest sea creatures to help us. <gasps> Is this thing on? <gasps> uh, what's up, your majesty? I need you to gather all your friends. I'm so excited to marry my true love. Poor guy, he doesn't know what he's saying. Hey, let me out. I have to get married to my lovely bride. Ugh. Okay, I hope Dolph and my dad are ready. What do you think you're doing, you urchin? I've decided I can't wait to marry the prince. He's just so dreamy. Out of my way, shrimp. She looks mad. My darling, let's go get married. Okay, my love. Things are getting a little too real. Where's Dolph? And my dad? E -e 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 -e. They're here! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! Start the wedding! We're gathered today. Whoa! To join this. Whoa! Skip to the end. Do you. Wait. What's your name? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Do you? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Take this man, Prince Jeff, to be. I do. Prince Jeff, do you? Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Don't worry, we got this. You, you're doing this. I was gonna play fair, but I changed my mind. You'll have to go through me first. No problem. Ah! Mmm, <laughs> tastes like chicken. Uh, what happened? The evil sea witch's spell is broken. Hey, that guy has a tail. Uh-oh. What's going on? Really long story. Hey, talking dolphin. Uh, I should go. And look, she's a mermaid. Uh, uh-oh. Wait a minute, it's you. It is. <laughs> you can talk. I can. <laughs> and you're a real mermaid. Yeah. Very cool. Jeff, are you okay? Absolutely. I told you mermaids were real. The Little Mermaid and the Prince lived happily ever after. And she didn't have to change who she was after all. Plus, now she could get milkshakes from the land whenever she wanted. Story time.